everyone, my name is King Ivy, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to perform some audit tests over sales using Case Rear Analytics IDS software. So in this case, the testing area is sales, and the audit objective and risks are to evaluate the occurrence of sales, so did the sales actually happen, and the risk that sales is overstated. Revenue recognition upon shipment of goods. So the re revenue shouldn't be recognized until a good, a good is shipped. Uh, the data files that we're going to use is this data file called sales and shipment data. If you go on the next slide, you'll see that a couple of procedures we have to perform. One, reconcile the sale revenue from sales data to the financial statements. So total re revenue on this financial statements is two and a half million approximately and then evaluate the integrity and validity of data, data transactions. So that includes identifying duplicate transactions based on transaction numbers, and then identify transactions invoiced in December, but shipped in January. So do they recognize revenue early? And then identify business units that appear to be channel stuffing, and randomly select five transactions from that population. The risk of channel stuffing occurs when December transactions make up more than 15% of the annual total. So let's get started. So I have an idea open. I'm going to create a new project. Let's call it let's call it AFM 417 Sales Testing YouTube. So first thing you have to do is go to the project. So AFM 417 Testing YouTube. Grab the sales and shipment data. Let's see right there. And then we're going to import the Excel document. So, the advantage of Excel importing is it allows you to import multiple tabs at once. So, we're going to first, first row is field names, import is zero. And then we're going to call this data. So everything looks okay. So then you'll see that there were two tabs, the sales and the shipment data tab. So the first thing we're going to do is always, always, always run field statistics. So we're going to check the invoice amount. So we'll see that there's two and a half million and that there's 1,002 records. So if we open up the raw data. You'll see that there are 1,003 lines minus the header, so 1,002, and the total is the same. Perfect. Now let's take a look at the shipping data. Make sure that one's complete. So then we'll just go off of shipment numbers. So we'll see that 4,280, and that there was record items of 82. So if we open up this data again. We'll see here 4,280. Perfect. And you can also take a look because there's no zero items, for example, no negatives. That's that's always good. Negatives could imply a return. Um, something in that manner. Minimum value, maximum value, uh, standard deviation, uh, the average, um, etc. So a lot of good data here. That can help us really evaluate whether or not this data there's any leading indicators. So the first procedure that we had to perform was make sure that the revenue from sales data re reconciles to the financial statements. So in this case it does because the financial statement says that there's two and a half million, and in our data there's also two and a half million. Perfect. That's great. Um, the next one is identify duplicate transactions based on transaction number. So we're going to go back to the data. We're going to go to analysis, we're going to go to duplicate key, and we're going to go to detection since we want to identify these transactions. So let's identify these transactions. Let's call it duplicate sales. Let's go sales. And then we have to identify the key. And the key is what is unique. So in this case, it's transaction number, so it was done this correctly. Um, and then we're going to include all the fields here. Press OK. 
and then we'll see for example you'll see that these are duplicated so that's good to bring up bring up to the client understand why that was occurring was it incorrect transaction number or are they two duplicates so we're going to export that to excel using the export function it's going to be in the export folder Duplicate sales create all the fields perfect so procedure one and then 2a are completed now we need to identify transactions invoiced in January in December 2013 but shipped in January 2014. So there's a couple ways we're going to do it. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to export, uh, extract all the sales data into, extract all the December sales data into a separate table. So we're going to call these December sales. And when that occurs, it's going to be when invoice date is in December. So pretty way to move on this video. Um, and just in case there's any transactions after December, we also want to make sure that we're doing before. There we go. December sales. Perfect. And then we need to go on the shipment side. Take a look at the data with the shipment data here. We're going to do an extraction again. We're going to call this January shipment. And we're going to go shipment. September 31st and shipment. Yes. February 1st. Perfect. So that's invoice January. See, there's not that many transactions. It's fine. Let's, now we're going to join the data and then we're only going to identify where they meet both conditions. So we're going to call this um, invoice. Okay. Join. I'm going to select the January shipment. We're only going to, well, yeah, I will include just the shipment date there. And we're only going to do match only because we only want to know when it's the December sale and a January shipment. We'll do it based on transaction number. And uh, that should be everything. So there you go. So you'll see that these are December sales and January shipments. Perfect. So we're done with basically the second procedure. Now we need to identify are there business units that are channel stuffing and then we're going to randomly select the transactions from that population. So there's a couple ways we can do this. Uh, the one way I'm going to do it is I'm going to first identify what are the total sales by business unit. So we're going to use a summarization. And then we're going to do it based off the business unit amount. Uh, we're just going to use quick summarization and we're going to call this business unit sum. We have the totals here. Now we need to identify the, the sum of each business unit by month. So basically, we're going to do something very similar. Except for, we're going to include one more field, which, which we need to create first. So we need to create uh, the month. So we're going to call this month. We're going to make it virtual numeric because that's what the field requires. So what you'll see here, it exports a virtual numeric field format. So we need to make sure that's correct. And then it's going to ask us for a date. So we're going to put it there. And then we're going to create the field. Perfect. So now we're going to summarize by business unit 
by month amount we're gonna go EU month so now we see the business unit by month and the sum so now what we're gonna do is now we're gonna join the total of the business unit and then create a pre calculation the total amount of sales for that particular month by business unit divided by the total amount of sales in that month, business unit for the year. So, so on the database, we're going to call this EU month total. Um, we're going to include all the things in the five minute. It's going to match either way because uh, there's subsets of each one another. So, and we just need one to include the amount. So let's identify the matching key, which is business unit. So now what you'll see that now there's a two amount sum. So we're going to change that. That a second amount sum is actually the annual total, total, yes, and we're going to change this one as well to total, and now we're going to create a new field, we're going to call it percentage total. And we're going to make it numeric, two decimal places. And we are going to do monthly divided by annual times 100. And then we're going to sort just to take a look. And then, as well, we only care about December. So we're going to actually export this into a new table so let's go and December and then we're going to make it so that the month equals 12 right because we'll be care about January and the percentage total is greater than 15. So greater than 15 percent, both conditions. And we're see that there's only one example. So now we need to identify all these transactions that are in business unit five, month 12. We could just extract it, uh, but what I like to do is I actually like to join. And that way uh, we're showing how we got the data in case we need to update the data further on. So we're going to go December channel stuffing and as well we're going to throw one more actually we need to throw one more criteria because we're going to match on first on business unit and secondly on month And we're not going to include any of the fields from the, the secondary database since we don't need them. And that's uh, So we need to one. So there you go. So now we have 20 transactions. And our objective is to select five of them. So we're going to use. Uh, this random calculation number of records to be selected five and then the seed doesn't really matter that just helps to create the selection and we're going to call this channel stuff here we we'll include all the fields except for this percentage of total this doesn't really tell us much ending record beginning record that should all be defaulted allow duplicate records uh, in this case we're not so once it's selected it's going to be out of the pile 
and now we have five transactions perfect and now we're going to export this data and we're going to call this chain list stuffing is like this perfect we're going to include all fields And now if we go to exports, we'll see our channel stuffing examples. Great. And we are also going to see our duplicate transactions. So we can ask the financial audit team to follow up on these or we can follow up on those transactions. And that's just uh, some examples of some sales testing that you can perform to check the validity of the sales transactions. So thank you. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you.